What's up? It's your girl T Moore. And if by now you haven't realized what show you're listening to, you're listening to On the Other Side of Momming because there's more to this mom life. And I'm your host, T Moore. That's who I be. And I got an, I have another person on here who names start with a T too. And I'm actually really, really excited to have her here. She is a fellow author like myself. And like she wrote this book and it comes out next week. And I'm like super excited about it. Um, and we're going to be talking about grown up stuff. So like, make sure you got your, your AirPods or whatever you need, put the kids to bed. I mean, they don't need to learn how they got here today. Not today. I don't, I don't know where we're going today. I don't even know how far we're going to go, but we might go far. We might, I don't know. might put the head in. We might not. I don't know what's happening here, but, uh, but I, without further ado, I would like to welcome Miss Tati Richardson to the show. Clap, 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 clap. Tati, tell, tell the people who you are, friend. Hi, T. Thank you. Um, my <laughs> name is Tati Richardson. Uh, I am a contemporary romance author. Um, I write rom-coms and I write uh, contemporary uh, and women's fiction and a little bit of queer fiction as well. Um, I am also a podcaster at Romance and Color where we talk about real inclusive love. We do a lot of book reviews, movie reviews. We talk about pretty much anything that's romance related that intersects with like media or whatever. And um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. I am a uh, avid collector of Wonder Woman things and uh, red lipsticks and wigs and all kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I just really enjoy um, talking about any and everything and especially um, talking with people like you. So I'm glad to be here. Yes, I'm happy you're here too. So as we always do, we always start to show off with a mom inspirational quote because, you know, us mommies, we need to be inspired from time to time, like all the time. Um, also, just to disclaimer, if you listen to this, I might sound a little bit like my name is Tyrone today. I know. My son <laughs> gave me the crud and um, also the weather be weathering here and it doesn't know if it's going to be cold, hot, I don't I don't really know what's going to yeah, be. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 um, it's ghetto. It's, it's, it there's is. no other way to put this. It's, it's, a, it's a tad bit on the uh, the ghetto side. <laughs> and so today's my inspirational quote comes from the queen herself, Queen Bey, um, Beyonce. And she says, you can still have your child and you can still have fun and you can still be sexy and still have dreams and still live for yourself. And so... As we talk about sex as a mom, right, Mm -hmm. when you hear that, like, Tati, what does that, like, say to you? Like, how does that kind of resonate, if at all, with you? Um, I think the quote totally resonates because I think a lot of times women feel like once they become moms and wives, uh, particularly moms, they feel like all the sexy things that they did need to go in the back burner, need to become this I don't know pious <laughs> like version of themselves this new version of themselves and I don't think that's true I think we should be really true to ourselves and whoever we were um while we were dating our spouses or 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 partners or whatever we need to continue to be that way um when we have children if you don't have a spouse um if you're just mm-hmm. a mom and you still want to be out there and dating and, and exploring yourself and and sexuality just because you're a mm-hmm. mom doesn't mean you need to just change who you are and the core of who you are as a person sexually. So yeah, you can yeah. still go out and have fun. You can still have a good time and, and, and mm-hmm. live live your life to the fullest, even as a right. mom and a wife. But you may not be able to necessarily hang from the ceiling fan if that's what you was doing 
prior to like that might be a little hard no, to do. You, like your bones your bones and ligaments might not be working the same <laughs> way you know what i'm saying but, or, or you know we might have gained a couple pounds and you know that 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 chandelier not, might not be able to hold us as much but you right. know you can still try other things alternatives you know you don't necessarily have to use the chandelier they got they got other things <laughs> to help not the out. chandelier <laughs> Yeah, don't break the chandelier. Like, don't, don't, don't do that. That that might be expensive. I think, like, when I became yeah. a mom, I definitely felt like I think that was when I felt like my unsexiest, right? And so, like, mm. I was when I was pregnant with my second daughter, though, I felt really pretty, though. With her, I felt pretty. My my mm. oldest, not so much, because I was um, sick and stuff, so I didn't really feel myself. But like, mm. I was more like, don't touch me. Like don't don't do that. This mm-hmm. this is how we got to where we are. Like this is your fault. <laughs> so I don't I don't mm-hmm. want to be bothered after these six weeks. And it was just more so I just felt like not just not me. Like how can I be me? And I got literally a kid on my boob, but you trying to rub my cheeks, my back cheeks and stuff, and trying to rub a little bit, <laughs> trying to get you some. But I'm ner- like yeah. it just be like, sir. This too much. I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't do it all. So it's like, how do you, you know, keep that spark? I guess, like, really, not even for your, your significant other, but just for you. How do you find that sexy, especially at the mommy? I invest in myself. Like, I put Mm. myself first. I know a lot of women say, "Oh my God, the kids come first. Blah, blah, blah. But if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be good, no, any good to anybody. So you need mm-hmm. to put yourself first. And part of that self care and is, you know, focusing on your sexual health and your sexual well being and your sexual mm-hmm. image. So whether that mm-hmm. be, you know, buying new lingerie or, you know, working out or, you know, you know, meditating on who you are as a person, your new body, your new shape. Cause you know, our mm. bodies change and things as we have kids, you know, it's all part of that self care and putting yourself first in order to, you know, center yourself and, and, and become who you really need to be as, as far yeah. as a sexy, sexy whole being, you know, cause yeah. you know, again, you, you, you don't have any like, if you have no idea about who you are to the core mm. of your being as a person, then how is anybody else going to know who you are? Ooh, and, and don't I, come on here preaching. How is anybody else going to know? <laughs> <laughs> how is anybody else going to know who you are, even sexually? How is your partner going to know who you are sexually if you're not in tune with who you are as as a Ooh. person? So yeah, you put yourself first. Yeah, yeah, that's the word, man. Don't come out here. I don't got no offering plate today, girl. I got no offering plate, but that's, but I think like this, but it's so true because we are, I think I talked about it like in my first episode, like there's this martyrdom. I don't think that's a word, but like martyring, like, you know, martyrs and then like martyrdom. Like, I just feel like you should just compound the word Mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm, That word. (laughs) But like, we are like, as moms, it's like society tells us like we are selfish if we think of ourselves. And so like, I feel like at 39, I'm really starting to learn who I am. In fact, I just actually told my husband the other night, I was like, how can I tell you how to love me if I don't love myself fully? in a way that Mm. I need to show up for myself. Mm. So I can't even really guide you into loving me if I'm not loving myself properly. So that takes, and so like lately here, I've been actually working out. I've been feeling real good because I want to get my Mm. cheeks tight for the summer. Like, I, I don't know. I just wanted my cheeks, <laughs> cheeks lifted up. You know what I'm saying? And cause them kids, you know, like I said, the body changed and then them cheeks went, those were the first things to go. They was, they didn't fail. So I wanted to lift them back up where they need to be. Hollywood. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I think mm-hmm. about what you said, like our body does change. And I think as women, we don't really kind of mourn and we don't also learn to accept the new body. That we, you know, and I think I media agree. plays a part in that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you think about Tiana Taylor, baby, she snatched all the way back, but I also don't have Tiana Taylor money to snatch to snatch back like that. You like, don't. You don't have the time. Her 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 job mm-hmm. is her image. Her job is her body. So she's going to invest that time 
into mm-hmm. her body and her image. She has nanny. She has this. Yeah, you don't have that. You're yeah. working a nine to five. You're you're getting right. up in the morning. You're packing lunches. You're doing all of those things. You don't have that time to do those things that you know celebrities have. Mm-hmm. And like you say, you have to mourn the body that you have and celebrate the new body that you have. Celebrate the curves. Celebrate the pooch. Celebrate mm-hmm. this. The you know, pooch. I, I got, when I. Yeah, when I turned 40, like I've always had a stomach, right? So when mm-hmm. I turned 40, I was like, you know what? I, you know, I'm not participating. I made a conscious decision. Yeah, I wear makeup. Yeah, I wear wigs, all this stuff. But I made a conscious decision not to participate in the beauty market anymore. Cause I Ooh. felt like I was, I was consuming myself with it. Mm-hmm. And th- mm-hmm. that being said, I, I was, putting too much time and effort into the latest this and the newest this and that to try to make myself look and feel a certain way when I need to be comfortable with the discomfort of who I am now Mm -hmm. Um, and and just really learn to accept the shapes and changes and, and the new ways in which I function and flow now versus when I was older. So I'll say, you know what? I can't participate. I'm 40. I can't participate Beauty is yeah. a young person's game. You know what I'm saying? It's a yes, young person's yeah. game. I can't participate in the beauty market like these mm-hmm. young people can. I'm going to yeah. participate in it in, in wellness and self care <laughs> and things yeah. like that versus trying to make myself this image, this younger image of, of 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 myself 20 years ago. I can't. I can't do that. I can't remake time. So I need yeah. to be okay with. You know the wrinkles and the laugh lines and the pooch right. and all that stuff that I have. And pooch is you know, real girl, though. Just, yeah, just invest in some shapewear, girl. Like you don't need. It's, yes, it's okay. it's they okay. have it, girl. It's it, it, and it's cute shapewear, and it's not like it's not like he gonna be like, I don't want you because you got on some space. And, and if like, and if he like that, then we have another conversation that need to be had because right. then he, he might need to go or she might need to go. Like, but listen, right. we ain't out here. We're not about to do that. Like my C-section scar, I, I just had to accept it. It's here. It's here. But I realized what it did mm-hmm. for me. It it birthed mm-hmm. me two beautiful kids, you know, and I got smart on the last yeah. one and let somebody else do the heavy lifting for me. Because listen, listen, I just don't. <laughs> but I just, but you're so right. It is a young person's game. And I think about like when you said that, I thought about like the, the Bible verse, it talks about how beauty is fleeting and, you know, things of that nature. And it's just like, yeah, it, it goes. It goes. You see old people, mm-hmm. they, they be cute. Your grandparents was, you know, was probably real handsome or pretty back in the day, but they, they old. Oh, the wrinkles have come. Like we, we can't avoid it. It's just like, it's inevitable. Yeah, and we- so I've started to learn to embrace my body. But then we, but on the flip side, we see older women. I think about some older women in my community, or even my aunts who are in their sixties, and they're mm-hmm. beautiful and smart. And they look, they look twenty, yeah. thirty years younger than who they are because mm-hmm. they're free. They're they free Ooh. themselves and their minds from 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 the obsession of age, the obsession of 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 being, and because they're free. And, and, and have freed themselves from this obsession of how I look and, and, and act and all this mm-hmm. stuff. They're sexier for it. The sexiness. Ooh, break it down, the Tati. Is in their hands. <laughs> the you ain't lying. Mm-hmm. When you're free from things, when you're free from, from this, this gaze or whatever that's out there, then you just yeah. become sexier inside and it, and it radiates outward and everybody can yeah. tell. Cause you ain't lying. First mm-hmm. of all, we all know that good black. Um, don't crack. don't crack. I have to always crack. I have to crack with good because there's there's some black that's not that do crack, but the good black, the good black, it ain't it ain't cracking. Like this lady, she complimented me. She said, "Listen, she said you look like you're 34, maybe maybe 30." I said, "Girl, no, I am 39." But God bless you. Look at you. Come yeah, the Costco plan. Yeah, yeah. People say, like, "How old are you?" I'm like, "I'm like, I'm 44," and they're like, "Are you you're kidding?" Right? Girl, I said. Say, no. We can I'm, I'm, I'll be 44 next. <laughs> I'll be 44 next week. So I, um, I'm blessed for, for that. Well, happy That's early right. birthday. Listen, Thank if you. y'all are watching <laughs> this, um, she out here lying. She's not 44. Like, there's... Y'all need to see my driver's license and, and, and my... Uh, 
my birth certificate. I am nineteen seventy nine. <laughs> Who you seventy nine? You what? What is that? Gen X? Yeah, you a Gen I'm X. A, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a Gen X Zennial. I'm like right in the middle. Now you're not a Gen in the X and millennial. You're not in the middle, yeah. friend. You're in the middle. I'm in the middle. Like, it's it's zennial. It's zennial. That's my that's even that's even my handle for my for my romance. I'm like sexy, sexy, zennial. sexy romance for black zennials. So yeah. Oh jeez, listen. That's what I'm talking about. Prime example. Good black. Don't crack. So drink your water. <laughs> moisturize. Mind your business. You know what I'm saying. Cream. <laughs> oh, facts. Oh, we ain't even gonna go down there. Like cream. I have. Cause listen, black people can get skin cancer. The, this we actually have less vitamin D. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it is the science. But that is so true. Like I think about, like you said, I think about my aunts and stuff like that. They're like, yeah, they're like in their fifties, sixties, and stuff like that, and they don't look it. Like, Mm-mm. there's always the thing. Like when I'm with my mom, and they see my mom and my 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 baby sister with us, and they're like, oh. Okay, that's your mom. And she'll be like, yeah, like she's going to be 65 this year. She looks nowhere near 65, like easily could pass for like late, like early 50s or something like she, you know, but you, it's right though. Like when you free yourself of these expectations, like I've just started wearing makeup again, mm-hmm. but it's only more so because I like how I look, but the thing that I wanted to focus on was my skincare. I wanted to make yeah. sure I was taking care of my skin. Mm-hmm. Before I put on this makeup to try to yeah. hide something, I don't want to hide because I want to know that when I take off this face, you know, that's been beat to the gods, that my skin underneath here isn't going to scare me. I don't want to be scared right. when I'm looking at you, you know, like cause this is the everyday face. Like with three kids, I don't have time to be putting on makeup like mm-hmm. this. So I got to take care of my regular skin. They ain't got no makeup that's not enhanced because I probably look tired and I am tired. I'm tired. <laughs> They're three, well, five, know, and seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, and even though I only have one one kid, it's, it's you know, and they say you only have one. I'm not going to say it like that because people have told me, <laughs> you only have one kid. Why are you, why are you tired? It's, it's a lot. One, it's, it's a lot. For another human being, it's a lot. Um, but you know, having one child and still having to take, make sure their needs are met and having making sure mm-hmm. my own needs are met. You're right. You, you, you are going to feel and be, and be worn down, but you don't have to look at my, aunt, my aunt always <laughs> say, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. You know, Ooh. that's her favorite saying. Thank God I don't look like what mm-hmm. I've been through. Um, that's, because, that's the season you know, saying say right there. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've been, we've been through a lot, you know, as as black women, we go through a lot, and I think, you know, like you said, just I think you know you you made you had a good metaphor going on about makeup and your skincare, right? So mm-hmm. you were talking about like putting on makeup, but underneath you need to care for your skin, right? Right. That's a good metaphor for us caring for ourselves. We can put mm-hmm. on all this facade of happiness, all this facade of 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 well being, all this facade. But if deep down you're not caring for your soul, caring for who you are as a person, and caring for yourself, then it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna peek through no matter how much you cover stuff up. Ooh, you know facts. what I'm saying? No matter how much covering you put on, it's gonna mm-hmm. it's gonna peek through. And the same sure. thing, like we were talking about, this sexiness, sexiness. Mm-hmm. If you try to put on this facade of I'm sexy, I'm I'm I look good at that, but deep down you haven't done the work to, to feel sexy and really be sexy, it's gonna right. come off looking crazy. Like you, you have to feel, you have to feel it, really, really feel it inside before you try and, and manifest it outwardly. That's so true. I've started following these um these women, these black women who are like um I guess they're like physical therapists, but like for like pelvic health. And um, talking mm-hmm. about like the vagina and I follow like some Christian sex therapists that are kind of breaking it down and differently. And it's like it's the way it's almost like for me, having grown up in church, the way sex was presented to. Right. You you deal with like this whole mm-hmm. purity culture situation and 
we as women, to me, I feel like we feel more repressed, right? Like we can't really touch ourselves. Like women don't do that or, you know, mm-hmm. un, you know, or to get loose, so to speak, in the bedroom would be like, oh, well, she must be a hoe because like where you learn them tricks at? Like, and it's just like, <laughs> as I'm kind of like undoing some learning and things, I'm just like, well, if I don't mm-hmm. touch me, how then can I tell you what I like? Like you might be humping and pumping. Exactly. Exactly. And you think you going for the go, but really I'm still over here wondering when you about to be done so I can get some water. Cause I'm thirsty at this point. Now you didn't just, all you did was make me work up a sweat for <laughs> un- unnecessarily. Like, you know, but like, I think even as moms, especially after we have our kids and we're comfortable, I think we need to get to a place to where like, touching that body again because it has changed like I don't I don't necessarily recommend people look at their vagina after having mm-hmm. a kid I did that and it terrified me I've never did it again I was like oh my god and I had c-sections and I didn't know it was still gonna look <laughs> like it looked down there I was like yeah it's it still like, if people don't realize that even after you have a c-section your vagina is still affected by that people didn't know. realize that yeah. Didn't know. Didn't know. Took a took a gander down there and thought, like, oh shit. Um you know, but <laughs> you might need to reacquaint yourself with your new body. Like to tap into that sexy. Mm-hmm. Like it might be, you might let your hands slip down there while you showering. Just see. Do it work mm-hmm. still. Stimulate the clitoris mm-hmm. for yourself. Make mm-hmm. sure it works. Do you want to be touched there? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I think I told you offline, I used to have a mm. sex bar for like 10 years and I talked about sex. And yes. Talk about, about this sex bar and, and movies and all that stuff. Right. So <laughs> I used to have a sex blog. Um, it was called a uh, sex and the, um, Southern bell. It's probably still up. So it's probably still up. You probably. Was it like on like the old school, school like the blog spot? <laughs> Did yeah, it was on blogger. Spot? It was on blogger. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I, um, just kind of documented my dating life and stuff to before I met my husband. Um, and maybe a little after that too. And it was really about like all the things that I encountered, you know, dating and getting to know myself because this is my second marriage. So before I was married before pretty young and I got a divorce. Um, and then I was single for about five, almost six years before I met my husband. Mm-hmm. And so it was a really a period of me relearning myself because mm-hmm. I felt like I was like one of those girls who was like a serial monogamous. Like I, I was always like, I have to, be, I, you know, I want a boyfriend, I want mm-hmm. a boyfriend versus me really exploring myself and my sexuality and all this stuff that I didn't realize mm-hmm. until I was older, mm-hmm. learning more about myself and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, and so, you know, on the blog, I, I, I realized, you know, after I had my daughter, I was like, my body changed, my my vagina changed, all these things. Mm-hmm. And I was researching. I was like, it wasn't really about me tightening my pelvic floor and things like that, even though that's, that's very helpful for your bladder and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It was really about me learning. It's going to change. It's going to feel different yeah. after you have a baby. You had a whole person Human. in there in your mm-hmm. uterus, y'all. It's not going to be the same. Um, from that, that from your uterus down, it's just not going to be the same. It's just not. so you know. I invested in toys. I invested in the research. I yeah, I invested in all Let that to kind of learn and relearn mm-hmm. my body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would tell any mom, um, to really, really don't be ashamed of toys. Don't be ashamed of doing the research. You're don't be afraid of lube because guess what? You're not gonna be as, you know, moisturized down there as you mm-hmm. were before. So please invest in lube. You know, mm-hmm. find the right lube for you. Every every lube does not work the same. So mm-hmm. if you want to use a more natural based lube or a water based lube, and we should be using water based lube actually yeah. for our bodies. Um, you know, see what's best for you, you know. So, you know, it, all of that factors in into getting older and stuff like that. You know, if you're not mm-hmm. orgasming like you were before, you need to have mm-hmm. a deep conversation with your partner about, look, I am not orgasming. I mm-hmm. need to check. I need to tell you why I'm not orgasming. And if they get offended, then, 
you know, that's 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 deeper, a deeper conversation going on mm-hmm. because a lot of that is ego wrapped into into your mm-hmm. own sexuality, which it shouldn't be the case. It's right. really about if they're a, a a partner, they should be a generous lover, a willing to learn, you know, a partner mm-hmm. is willing to learn and willing to accept that th- we're older and things change and we need to get to know each other differently. Because right. guess what? Men's testosterone levels go down. They Thank can't get father. it up like like they couldn't either. So, see, exactly. As soon as they pass thirty five, mm-hmm. you know they not they not doing it like they used to in their twenties and teens. she say? So that's something in the nutty that professor. Come, come about yeah. Mm-hmm. What she saying? The nutty professor. She says, "Yeah, your limp, your limp noodle. That's little blue pill. Limp she noodle. Said, exactly. Limp, she said, your limp noodle." <laughs> But you're right. We have to, we have to like listen, like we, because we don't want you men just thinking it's just us. We, you two age and and it's and, not, and it don't die and don't and don't dare put it all on us either. <laughs> that part, mm-hmm. that part, Mm-mm. not at all. Because listen, you know? y'all don't get to go you know, through you know, menopause you know, like us. I, I have, you know, I I had some girlfriends who were like. You know, I'm just not, you know, I'm not satisfied sexually. They talk mm-hmm. to their partners. Their partners get upset. Well, you, you need to fix it. It's not Ooh. a you thing. It's a us thing. We you know, need to, we fix, need it. to <laughs> fix it. We need to address the issue. Maybe you need to go to the doctor. Maybe Ooh. you need to look at your sperm count. Maybe you need to look at your, you know, <sighs> vasoconstriction or whatever. <laughs> You know, <laughs> men are so especially black men already don't like to go to the doctor, number one. Number Thanks. two, you know, trying to tell them what to do is another thing. And it gets so so much of their identity, particularly men and black men, are wrapped up in their sexuality, which shouldn't be the case. Um, and you know, we need to It's a trauma response to men. Avoid those things. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is. It is, yeah. it absolutely is a trauma response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, cause I, I think about it. I, I know somebody who wouldn't get a vasectomy because they're like, I shouldn't get one. Um, because like, that's, that's not for me. And so like, I be, I be like really side eyeing these, these people. So you want your person to put hormones in her body to avoid having the baby because it takes two of us to make this baby anyway. So you want her to do all the things. Right. I, I was I was real clear on what I was doing and not doing because it's easier for you to get snip snip, put some ice on your balls, and you down for a day mm-hmm. than it is for me to get my tubes tied. Uh, and, day. Right. Like and have to risk cancer, risk going up now because I didn't tie my tubes immaturely or prematurely and are having to deal with birth control. And, you know, already hormones already be fluctuating. So we just going to add more hormones to the mix just to, you no, know, I'm not going to do it. You have to find somebody else to do that. Like, mm-mm. but they are really tied and wrapped up into, you know, all of that ego. And it's just like, yeah, if your partner's getting offended, then like Tati said, it's, it's time to have a, a deeper conversation because they got some trauma. They do. They got some trauma. They don't even know they got it, but yes, that's absolutely that's the trauma response. So as so we're investing in ourselves, mm-hmm. we are taking the time to really, mm-hmm. you know, have some self care, really embodying the sexy, mm-hmm. you know. So as mm-hmm. we have, so so what's next? So we've done all this. You know, we didn't touch ourselves a little bit. We like, oh, I like that. That's cute. Um, figured out how we like to orgasm as a mom. How are we having sex around these kids? Like, cause they here. So, so what if you got little people's? You know what? This this sounds this sounds so not sexy, right? But sometimes <laughs> right. you gotta schedule the sex. Um, oh, yeah. you have to schedule the sex sometimes. You like every Wednesday night, you could put on a calendar, put a little red dot, red <laughs> egg, red <laughs> heart, <laughs> and your kids be like, "What's that for?" That's like, you know, mommy and daddy have to talk that night or whatever. You know, <laughs> you go to your room, go to bed early. Mommy and daddy are talking that night. We lock the mm-hmm. door, and you don't come in, and that's the night that we we have our together time, whether it be mm-hmm. whether it lasts. 20 minutes or two hours, <laughs> you know, we, we're 
get put together. You know, you know how it is. Sometimes it's yeah. short, sometimes it's long. You know, it depends on on, 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 the, on how tired we are. How, it depends right. on the day, right? So I think it's. I mean, it's it's not sexy, but you really do need to schedule that time with your partner. Um, mm-hmm. Time away from your kids. Period. You know, yeah. taking a solo trip. If you have, if you have a trusted person in your community or, or right. family circle to leave your child with, if you don't, mm-hmm. then don't do that. I understand that completely. <laughs> um, yeah, don't do that. So don't put your, don't put your baby in no harm's way. But mm-hmm. um, you know, try to take some solo trips. Try to, you know, have some solo time away from your child. Like I said, yeah. that 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 calendar schedule time is not sexy, <laughs> but it it definitely helps keep the spark going in your relationship for sure. Right, right. Because you might just take a nap. Yeah. Who knows yeah. on your schedule time? Like you might just be <laughs> like, listen, you yeah. tired? Me too. Let's go to sleep. Like you know, I can't tell you how many times. Sometimes, maybe sometimes y'all don't have sex at all. Maybe it's more of a sensual touching mm. or just just you know just caressing and talking right those people don't realize that these are also intimate things not even you know non-penetrative things that you can do yeah. with your partner to still remain close and intimate you know with right them and, and and keep the bonds of your marriage and stuff or, or mm. partnership and i don't want to mm. talk keep talking in the binary but whatever your mm. your orientation is um and right you know whether you be queer or not or whether you be polyamorous and you got two partners and you got to keep satisfied you got to really keep um, satisfied you know, whatever that is you got to really keep satisfied listen <laughs> um you know whatever your your ideal situation is you know it helps to keep it honestly it just helps to keep a schedule i mean yeah it's not sexy but it just helps i don't like mm-hmm. schedules i didn't do too well with the schedule <laughs> I'm, like, I'm tired i'm going to sleep <laughs> i know i know it's not i know it's not it's not sexy then half the time we falling asleep and mm-hmm. you're like okay i'm gonna shower and then you come out of the shower and they you know that person laid out <laughs> I'm not either, you know, but, or then you go to sleep and you wake up like one, two o'clock in the morning. Like, look here, we got to get up in a couple of hours, <laughs> but you know, yeah, I don't like happen. that. Either. That's all I gotta say is make it happen. Make it do what it do. But yeah, you don't know, wake me up um, in the middle of the night. Don't, exa- don't, ex- don't, but. But at the same time, don't put your partner's needs like that ahead of your own. Ooh, say that like, again and stuff like that. Because I, I just, I, yeah, don't put your part, don't put your partner's needs uh, ahead of your well being. I, I just heard Larsa Pippen. I don't know if y'all know who Larsa Pippen is. I do. Um, used to be married to Scotty Pippen. Done dated all around. Done dated all around the NBA and whoever else. Child, a man. Anyway, she said when she was dating, when she was, she she she's involved with them Kardashians. You know, they they in the same type. Oh, they, they, oh okay. Well, they say less. Like, okay. Oh, now she old and acting. Okay. So you so, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yes, yeah, but now she's dating like Eddie Eddie Murphy's son or somebody's no Michael Jordan's son. Excuse me, Michael Jordan's son, who's in his like. <gasps> 20s, 20s or something and Larson's in her 40s yes cool, good, so cool, anyway good. um she was saying when she was married to Scottie Pippen they mm-hmm. had sex three to four times a night and she said she didn't have an off night like she just every day three four times a week a, oh. day, a night a day all week and oh. I thought to myself either you are lying or yeah. you're lying or you just did not give yourself any grace or a break because what about you know when you're on your cycle what about it when you i guess that i guess hey she just went right put, through it yeah, put a towel like, down i guess I, like yeah i guess i, I guess I was like, know, man, her, her vagina might have hurt <laughs> man, no. uh, it probably did but you know that's poor self-care that's poor yeah. management of your your sexual needs 
Because yeah. if you're doing that, and unless she, unless she's a person who likes doing it like that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, assume I know. But right. if she, but I feel like that's poor management of your sexual needs and your partner's sexual needs. Because guess what? All of y'all need a break. Sometimes. Everybody, because I'm trying to figure to out. Everybody at night, I might. I, we lucky for the one, the I'm one like, session a day. I'm like, you got kids, y'all got stuff to handle, y'all got business. When did you handle any of that if you haven't sex three to four times a day? You couldn't. Again, you couldn't. I say, I, I, I just say you <laughs> have to put yourself first, not, Again. not your partner. But you, that's, you, you know respect what? respect your partner, you respect their needs, mm-hmm. but you have to put your sexual health first. But not above yourself. And that's such a good, like, Gosh, it's such a good mm-hmm. reminder because we we do it though we do it as women. I know that I've been guilty of that, like putting my needs, whether it be my husband or my kids, before myself. And then I'd be over here wondering why I'm mm-hmm. tired, why I'm irritable, why I'm this. And it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, let me tell y'all, therapy therapy been working for me because now your sis be setting boundaries. Okay, <laughs> I, she set a boundary. Yeah. I respect you. I hear you. But at this time, I cannot. I cannot. So, um, got right, right, like right, right, right. Mm-hmm. I'm not there. But three to four times a day, maybe in my twenties. She, I don't think that's know. true. But you know, we don't know, Larson. Even in my twenties, I'd be like, I want to go get something to eat. Like <laughs> after a while, I'm like, can I? Eat? Can I? <laughs> Can we go you going to bring me a meal like, or something? I'm hungry. Like, I want <laughs> a meal or something. We didn't, back then, I'm I'm old enough to know back then we didn't have no Uber Eats. We didn't have none of that. We had to go get Did up not. and go get the food. Unless Did it was not. pizza being delivered, you know, mm-hmm. other than that, we had to go These get the food. These kids, so, they got luxuries. Know. They got some luxuries. Like, it's a yeah, weird. They do. <laughs> they got some luxuries. Like, it's a weird conundrum to grow up in the 90s. And like watch technology unfold. And so it's like, oh my God, my daughter found a calling card. I don't even know where this calling card was at, but you know how like back in the day to make long distance calls, you had to have a call. It had 600 minutes yeah. on it. I was like, yeah. yo, she said, mommy, what's this? I said, it's a calling card. A calling card? <laughs> what's, what's that? And in that moment, I felt oh every bit goodness. of my age as I tried to explain to her that you know, once upon a time when you made phone calls um, from a landline, a house phone, and I, I know they don't know what a house phone is, because um, all they do is to have these cell phones, but it's just like... Well, we still have one. Do you? I really want one, um, and I have one briefly, but my husband talked about me so bad that I, I parted ways with said landline. Um, but I liked it, because I'm like, what if the power go out? How you going to make an emergency call? If your cell phone did. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's why you have to It's the easiest thing for your kids to learn. Yeah. That's now right. that now with cell phones having like thumb and, and face IDs, your kid can't open your phone if there's an emergency. No. So you, not. you get a line, landline. And there mm-hmm. you go. See, that's how you copy. But now you just call them without no calling card. <laughs> but like <laughs> But yeah, wasn't no Uber right. Eats girl. It wasn't no Uber Eats. You had to really get up and go. No. Like do it. And I think as moms, like kind of no. touching on your point, is like we really have to move away from self betrayal. Like we really have to mm-hmm. get to the point where we really are being vocal about our needs and um, hey, if your your partner's trying something new and you don't like that shit, be like, that ain't gonna work. I, I, what's that that TikTok where she be like, mm-hmm. everybody want to be so creative. Nobody told you to do that. Everybody's Nobody. so creative. <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby Kev, Kev on stage said, what would you do if your partner said that during sex? <laughs> Everybody's so creative. Oh my god! Listen, listen. The, you, I tell you what, you'll be done having sex then. At that point, I think it'll be will be done. I know we'll that's done. right. Because <laughs> because you're doing I, too I much. Know that's right. We were, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna pack it up. I'm just see to that see this what I'm I that wasn't working right. I'm done. You right, but like we really like <laughs> it's such a hard thing to like undo because again. 
how we're taught in society as women, we are to, you know, serve, we are to be submissive, we are to be all these things. And it's not about us. It's about the kids. It's about your partners, about your friends and everything else. And you just got to reach a point of saying enough with the shits. I ain't going to do it. Like legit, Mm -hmm. really go find somebody else to do it Mm -hmm. in this moment. And just really learning to honor ourselves. And I think when it comes to having sex as a mom, we have to really start honoring ourselves. Like you said, yes, I can respect my partner's needs and desires, but they cannot come before my own. I cannot betray myself. Like if we had sex twice this week and on night number three, I'm just like, I'm tapped out. I literally cannot. And you go have a tantrum about it. That's going to be your tantrum. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the boundary. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold the line, and you're gonna be all right. Or you mm-hmm. can get some lotion and a towel, and you know, do what you do best. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. And he need, and he needs to be realizing self self care is self care is key for him too as a dad. You know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he and might I think spend some time alone. <laughs> and get to know yourself and sex starts outside of the bedroom like you know that intimacy is outside of the bedroom let me tell you it's sexy when you clean up the house and I ain't said it's it's real sexy mm-hmm. when you cooking dinner um it's se- like ooh, yes mm-hmm. turn me on like those mm-hmm. things help take the mental load off of your partner. So think about as a mom, especially our, our mommies yes. who are stay at home moms, full time stay at home moms. Like what joy would be if for your partner to come home and just cook the meal, bathe the kids, put them down for bed. You didn't been with the little jokers all mm-hmm. day. I would like to go wipe my ass in mm-hmm. peace. That's what I would like to do in this moment. Yes. Um, and, yes. and not be, be bothered. Um, I've been touched on all day, all day. Like I was, and I was a nursing mom. Mm-hmm. I definitely would be like, please take this child so that yeah, I can I free my titties. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so they could get mm-hmm. off of me for a few minutes. And so, yeah, I think mm-hmm. as moms, we really got to start vocalizing clearly if we're able to our needs. Um, and holding that boundary and realizing that I'm not responsible for that person's response or reaction, you know, cause those are their feelings and they're valid for them, but I'm gonna hold my boundary, but I still love you, but I'm gonna hold this boundary. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. You're so right. You're so right. And you make a good point about partners coming in to alleviate some of the labor, some of the, even some of the invisible labor that women do mm-hmm. that men don't even think about, you know, the meal planning, the prepping, the this, that, that's all that yeah. invisible labor that takes time. It don't matter. Stuff don't magically get done. You know what I'm saying? Like we're making no. the plans. We're doing this. It'd be yeah. nice. If you want your partner to feel relieved and stress free and feeling sexy enough to give you some three, four times a night, then you need to <laughs> alleviate some of that invisible labor. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because listen, because by the time you get to me and talking about some, hey, you sleep? Yes, I am. I'm. I'm for damn sure. I'm sleeping mm-hmm. at this point. I didn't did because now it becomes yes. Because this now becomes a to do list. This is now on my to do list of things to do mm-hmm. is you, and I don't want it to feel like a task mm-hmm. that I'm doing. Um, I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy you. I want to, you know. We both deserve to be having a good time, but I can't have a good time if, if in the back of my mind while you humping and pumping, I'm thinking about, did I make Susie's lunch? No, I don't think I made her lunch. And also, mm-hmm. the dog had the vet appointment, so I'm going to have to take off work to make get sure the dog gets to the vet appointment. Like, I don't want to have those thoughts mm-hmm. in my head percolating because the other half haven't been picked up or there hasn't been a question of how can I help you? Like it goes both ways. And so, yeah, so definitely like holding it, holding boundary, sis, hold it, hold it, hold it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But yes, ma'am, this has been so good, Tati. 
<laughs> so thank you for so, having me. Thank you for taking time to talk to me. So if you were to sum up everything we talked about and you were talking to like a new mom, you know, she's like, bro, he trying to get it in, you know, I'm still dealing with postpartum, whatever, whatever, like my Justin Timberlake talking about something he was bringing sexy back, but I ain't found it yet. I don't know if it's like the back yeah. of the shelf. Like I don't know where it's at. What would you just like? Three things you would just tell her. One, give yourself grace. Mm. For give, give yourself grace and peace and time, because mm. you're not going to. You're not a celebrity. You're not going to snap back. To, to who you are immediately mm -hmm. to learn the new you learn mm -hmm. the new you your new body your new mind your new your new everything the new mm -hmm. shape of, of of everything about you is different and three communicate these changes and things with your partner if you if you have a partner communicate mm -hmm. those things with your partner um let them know things are different and we're gonna have to learn how to operate in a new normal now so mm. my boobs gonna be hanging low my stomach is, is not as tight as it was no. before but these are things that you got to learn to adjust and love you know unless you're gonna be paying for me a mommy snap back surgery or whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> other than that we need to learn the new normal and and, and above all else if you don't have, well, actually a bonus thing. If you don't have the answer to something, find mm -hmm. the answer. Seek help. Do not be ashamed yes. to go seek help, particularly yes. when it comes to your own sexual health and satisfaction. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to verbalize it and go seek professional help when yes. it comes to, to things um, that are going on with your body. So those Facts. Are the things I would say. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my beautiful Sora, tell, mm -hmm. tell the good people how we can find you, connect with you. What, what are you, what are you working on? Mm -hmm. What's, 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 what's coming down this pipeline? Well, uh, well the podcast is always going. So if you mm -hmm. all want to listen to my podcast, it's romance and color and that's color with a U we we're doing right now. We're still doing pretty much weekly but as we go into the next um the next season it'll probably be bi-weekly um mm -hmm. because i got books to write um, yes. <laughs> um i'm working on a follow-up to my debut yeah i'm, I'm working on the follow-up to my debut novel um hopefully that will be out either late this year or early next year um I'm working on what's the debut project uh-uh ma'am Ma'am, come oh, back. The debut come novel back. is yes. the build up. Yes. Yeah, the debut novel is the build up. It comes out next Tuesday, the twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. um, it's available on all major retailers, um, as well as on audiobook form. So if you want it on Audible or Kobo or wherever you listen to your books, um, you can get it there as well. Even on Spotify, you can now listen to audiobooks on Spotify now. Really? Um, so it's available everywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Spotify now has audio. You have to pay for them, but you still. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> and as you, yeah, and also <laughs> it's not part of the subscription, girl. It's extra. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media at Richard Writes On. That's Richard and W R I T E S. O N, kind of a play on Richard Wright. And you can find all this stuff on my website, which is Tatiana uh, And um, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. I'm so that's excited. Going I got a lot going on. But that's you got a lot going on. Listen, just to have one child, uh, <laughs> it's so much going on. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited though. Like y'all get this book. Um, I was blessed to be able to read an advanced copy of it. And it is, I love me some Ari and some, and some Parker. So y'all need to go and support black authors. Number one. Um, and request it at your libraries. And also because the libraries are yes. wonderful. So request it at your libraries. That's free 99. Mm -hmm. Okay, share it. Also free ninety nine. Um, there are so many ways to support authors. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but always definitely purchase the book because we do like to be able to earn out on our advances. God bless. Um, so, you know, do feel free to yeah, purchase a copy exactly. too. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll make sure Ooh, all that's linked yeah. in the show notes and everything like that. And mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm so excited for you and what is to come. Thank and you. hopefully you'll come back and visit with us again. I will. Yay. I will. You know, and hopefully you can come over to the Romance and Color and talk too. So, yeah, we'll we'll do an exchange. You come on over oh. to my side of things and we'll talk books and stuff like that. Books. Yeah. Books and even more Romance and Color. <laughs> yes, I'm here for it. <laughs> well, all right, y'all. Y'all know how we do. This is this is actually the last episode of the season. So, um, we going to see y'all. I know because, listen, my, my debut – comes out from Scholastic. I am my ancestor's wildest dreams is debuting this September. And, um, it's a big, pretty, yes, yes, it's, it's a pretty big deal. And so, um, yeah, so we, yeah. we got to gear up for debut season and I got to finish writing my, um, romance novel so that it too can get out here in these streets. And, um, so we got a lot of writing to do mm-hmm. deadlines to meet. So we taking yeah. a break into the fall. So yes. until then, my friends, okay. stay safe, stay well, mama, and we will see y'all on the other side. Bye. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.